Assalamu alaikum students. Today in the unit properties of matter, we are going to discuss uptrust. And in this, we are going to explain the significance of uptrust exerted by liquid on a body. We are going to state the principle of rotation and uh, the uh, in terms of uptrust. So first is what is buoyancy? Buoyancy is the force that causes object to float. It is a force exerted on the object when it is partially or wholly immersed in a fluid. Uh, this buoyancy is caused by the difference in pressure. Uh, we know that the, the, the pressure depends on depth, uh, depths. So the pressure is more on this uh, lower side than the upper side. So the pressure on the top of the object is the gravitational force because of this uh, uh, force is pulling this uh, turtle downwards and which is uh, uh, which pushes is downwards and the pressure at the bottom which pushes is upward is acting on the opposite side of the object in a static fluid. It is this pressure that is exerted in the upward direction is known as the buoyant force and this uh, uh, and the buoyancy is a phenomena that is due to the buoyant force so we can define buoyancy the upward force applied by the fluid on the object or the body when an object is put in or submerged in the fluid so anything that is put into the fluid it comes in contact with the fluid the fluid will exert a buoyant force on it and the unit, because it is a force, the unit is Newtons. Since the pressure at the bottom is always greater than at the top, so every object submerged in a fluid feels an upward force. That's why any object or body that is lowered in the water always feels a loss of weight. What is a buoyant force? When an object is immersed in a liquid, it experiences an upward force known as a buoyant force. This phenomena of experiencing an upward force is known as buoyancy. Is the term upward and the buoyant force are the same? So buoyant force and upthrust are the same. They are the forces exerted on a fluid on a body when the body displaces some weight of the fluid. The force of upward equal to the weight of the upthrust. The force of the upthrust equals the weight of the fluid displaced. So the buoyant force is the upward force exerted on an object when it is wholly or partially immersed in a fluid. This upward force is also called upthrust. It is due to the buoyant force that the body submerged partially or wholly in a fluid appears to lose its weight. It appears to be lighter. So upthrust is the force which is applied in the upward direction and force is a thrust that can be applied in any direction. So up, up thrust is only applied in the upper direction. Any other force can be any in the other direction. For instance, you can see that bio force, how the bio force makes things seems to be lighter. This is a weight that is uh, hanging in the air. So the weight of this object is seven pounds. So when it is lowered into the fluid, so you can see that it displaces the fluid that displaced fluid uh, by volume is equal to volume of this object and this displays uh, the weight by weight we say the weight of this uh, displaced water is three pound so because there is a loss of uh, three pounds you can say the, it is not in the water it is showing there is a loss of weight that is uh, four pound so seven minus four that is the loss of weight is three pound so the upthrust acting on this is e is equal to the three pounds three pounds so when in water the object experiences two force the weight of the object in air it is actual weight which acts in the downward direction the weight measured when the object is immersed in a fluid is apparent weight so this is its actual weight and this is shown is an apparent weight because this is apparent because it experiencing an upthrust so this uh, is showing the net effect it, uh, this cancels out the effect of the gravitational force and uh, this is four pound is the net effect on this the apparent loss of weight is 
is due to the buoyant force which acts in the upward direction. Okay, now so you can see that the buoyant force is equal to actual weight. Actual in the air we have taken is seven, and apparent weight that is read by the scale is four pounds. So seven minus four that is equal to three pounds. So the uh, buoyant force is equal to the apparent loss of weight. So the buoyant force acting on that object will be three pounds. The object displaces an equal amount of water. The bigger the volume of the object emerges, the bigger volume of the water is displaced. So those objects like ships, they have the bigger volume, so they uh, displaces a bigger volume of the water. And uh, those who has a smaller volume like needle, they displaces a smaller volume of the water. So volume of the liquid displaced is equal to volume of the submerged part of the object. So you can see that in this, uh, the actual weight is equal to 0 0.67. When it is lowered into the fluid, its weight seems to be the apparent weight is equal to 0.4. So you can see that upthrust, that is uh, the upthrust acting on it will be the difference between the two, that is uh, 0 0.27 Newton will be the upthrust acting on this uh, object. Okay, now. Uh, then the uh, buoyant force, uh, there are three situations. The significance of upthrust exerted by liquid on a body have the significance. Now, it, if we are comparing the buoyant force and the weight of the object, if the buoyant force is greater than the weight of the object, the object will rise up in the fluid. You can see this red arrow is representing the weight of the object and this is the buoyant force. If the buoyant force is more than the uh, weight, uh, the weight of the object, meaning that it displaces uh, more fluid than the weight uh, weight of this object, then it, it there will be a uh, object will rise up in the fluid and it will float on the surface. Now, in this case, you can see that the buoyant force and the uh, weight of the object are equal. If they are equal, it will hover. You can see it will ho hover means that it ca it can be it can be uh, sub it can be floating submerged into the water it may be partially above or partially below the water so it will be just uh, uh, floating but uh, it will float but it will be maybe it will floating inside the uh, liquid uh, so that there is a object will float in water in this situation but if the buoyant force is less than the uh, buoyant force is less than the weight, so object will fill. That is, you can see the uh, weight is more than the buoyant force acting on it. So uh, red, you can see this red arrow is more. In this situation, the object will sink like needle. Needle uh, weight is more than the weight of the fluid it displaces because its volume is very less. So whatever the volume of the water is displaces, its weight is uh, even uh, very lesser than the weight of the needle. That's why the needle always sinks. Or you can see a stone. The stone uh, uh, equal, uh, similarly displaces a less amount of the water by volume and the weight of that volume of water is less than the weight of the stone. So that's why the weight of the stone is more than the upthrust acting on it, uh, so it will sink. So if the object is floating, the weight of the fluid displaced is equal to weight of the object. This is the condition for the flotation. It may it floats or it may float some uh, if it is floating. If the object is submerged, the volume of the liquid displaced equal to volume of the object. Means that if the it is uh, now, uh, so these are the two conditions that the object will float, uh, that is uh, the object will rise up if the bind force is more than the weight and if they were equal, it means it will hover or it will just float on the water. So this is the significance of upthrust and uh, that due to this, uh, a, boat, it, uh, a boat made up of steel will float in water but a block of steel will sink. Now you can see that 
the ships are made with a very very large volumes so they will uh, displace an equal volume of the water so the weight of that water is greater uh, uh, that is the uh, weight of the water is equal to the upthrust so upthrust is greater than the uh, weight of the chip or we can say the buoyant force is uh, greater than the uh, weight of the ship so the ship floats on the surface of sea because the volume of the water displaced by the ship is very large and the weight of ship displaced the weight of the water displaced is large so the buoyant force acting on the ship is also greater so the weight of ship equals the buoyant force that it floats but in case of the you can see steel block it displaces a very small amount of the water so uh, this uh, uh, because the volume of the water it displaces is small so the buoyant force acting on it will be small and there is a the weight of this uh, steel block is more than the uh, buoyant force or upthrust acting on it so this steel block will uh, sink in the water similarly uh, so we are going to state the principle of flotation uh, for the for the object to float its weight must be equal or less than the upthrust acting on the uh, uh, act, uh, act, uh, upthrust acting on the liquid or the floating object displaces a fluid having weight equal to the weight of the object so these are the two uh, statements for the principle of flotation so you can see when the balloon will float the buoyant force and weight of the balloon is equal it will float and you can see that this is part this is uh, only partially submerged uh, in the Uh, liquid, but the force of gravity that is the weight, and the buoyant force is equal, so it is the uh, uh, it is floating on the surface, uh, and this is also floating on the surface. But if this has weight is more than the thrust acting on it, so it will sink. Now uses of the Archimedes principle we have already discussed the ship floats. but the steel block sinks now how the balloon floats on the uh, 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 in the air uh, the hot air balloon is filled with the helium gas and helium gas you know is lighter than the air when it is heated it has lower density than the surrounding air so resulting in the bigger upthrust that causes the balloon to rise this means that buoyant force is greater than the total weight of the balloon and when the height increases we know that the density of air decreases as the density decreases the buoyant force acting on it also decreases and the balloon descend uh, when the total weight of the balloon is equal to the buoyant force it remain floating in the air when this is the situation weight of the balloon is equal to the buoyant force acting on it it will just float so Uh, similarly the submarine can be made to dive in the water and can rise up because of this reason you can see they are it is filled with the ballast uh, ballast tanks uh, they are when we want to uh, submarine to dive so they they are filled with water and the air is ejected so its weight the weight of the submarine become more than the uh the more than the upthrust acting on the submarine so the submarine sinks when the submarine want to rise up this uh, this water uh, this ballast ballast tanks uh, that are filled with water in this uh, the water is removed so that it become lighter and less denser so uh, now the weight of the submarine is uh, a lesser than the upthrust acting on it so the submarine rises on the surface now this is for you to think uh, which one would have more buoyant force the coin has more buoyant force or this uh, uh, helping uh, helping gadget that is jacket uh, is more life saver that is more buoyant force you have to think for these two uh, and you can see that this is the warm fresh water if the 
the same ship is floating in a cold fresh water warm sea water and cold sea water now you can see that by how uh, much amount they are in the water why the depth of the ship immersed in the water is different so you are going to find this result and answer the, uh, with the reasoning that why their ships are at different depths in the water so thank you and allah Hafiz.